आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा दिस इज संजीत नारवेकर टॉकिंग टू वेटरन फिल्म आर्टिस्ट एंड ओकेजनल फिल्म डायरेक्टर मिस्टर पी जयराज मिस्टर जयराज सर शैल वी स्टार्ट एट द वेरी बिगनिंग व्हेन एंड वेयर वर यू बोर्न एंड कैन वी नो समथिंग अबाउट योर अर्ली डेज बिफोर यू केम टू बॉम्बे एंड फिल्म्स थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर नारवेकर आई वाज बोर्न ऑन द 28th ऑफ सितंबर 1909 at a place called Karimnagar a district of then Nizam's dominions the day i was born unfortunately my father who was a pwd accountant had to retire so my birthday and his retirement were two common things and every year he used to remind me of that that you are born and i have retired the conditions then in hyderabad were such that the place karimnagar where i was born was not connected by train they used to go by road they used to have a caravan of bullock carts carrying their valuables traveling for days and then reach their office so after my birth we had to return back to hyderabad and it was a journey of about 7 or 8 days and i was a small child of 11 days that's what my mother told me and one incident i must say i have been still so stubborn one day there was no milk my mother couldn't feed me so they got a she donkey and they gave me she donkey's milk that is why i think mr narvarkar i am still stubborn like a donkey and still existing so we came down to hyderabad where i had my early schooling when i was 6 years old i went to a school called the all saints high school and attending that I had to learn the local language that was Urdu and my first initiation into Urdu was to go to a mosque with a wooden plate dip my pen into a black ink and write the alphabet that is how I used to learn after my school hours then what happened was hyderabad was gripped with plague and we had to go down to the suburbs so it was a camp life for all of us so we went down my schooling did suffer though i used to travel up and down by the local trains and i was too young to do that but still i used to and attended different schools my father was a very senior theosophist so he told me that i'll send you to a boarding school at madanpalli now called rishi valley so he made arrangements and sent me down there then when i joined it was known as annie besant's wood national college so the principal was an irish poet and we i think whatever i am today i owe it to the three years that i spent in my school because there i learned what discipline meant we used to get up early morning do our chores attend our schools then play then again back again to school that it happened for three years i never came home so that shaped my future so afterwards i had to return back to hyderabad my elder brothers were all employed by that time so i had to join one of my brothers at a place called warangal also a district of the nizam state then and i early high school education i got there from there i came back to hyderabad and uh, did my middle school which is a board examination and i continued till my high school where my principal was a very famous personality called Marmaduk Pictol who became a muslim later on known as Muhammad Pictol and i remember when i was 14 years old we were given copies of quran we had to buy it it was an english translation and i kept it for a number of years and i studied it too after my high school where i was a science student i joined the nizam's college for my bsc i was in inter science in those days once after leaving school and going to college you had a sense of freedom and there we could play and attend college hours at our convenience sometimes so there i took a fancy and i was playing cricket and also as the captain of the gymnasium there and i had a chance to build up my physique on my 17th year with a correspondence course in america i stood 10th body beautiful among his students that was the charles atlas course 
So bodybuilding was my favorite sport in those days. And later on, I was supposed to go to London for engineering, which never happened. My brother said, because my father had retired and he couldn't look after us as we wanted. So my brother said, now you go down to Bombay or to Banaras University and finish your engineering. Later on, circumstances even prevented that. And I left home to seek my fortune and came to Bombay. I left Hyderabad on 14th of April 1929 and reached Bombay on the 15th of April 1929. I stayed with a friend of mine, who was a cricketer friend, for a month and tried out various jobs. But here I should digress. Mr. Narvarkar will remind me about it. If I had any taste for dramatics or films, I must say this now because I feel that I have right to say that I am a nephew of Sarojini Naidu and she had opened out a company called the Shakespearean Club of which Mr. Harindranath Chattopadhyay was conducting. And my first appearance on the stage was at the age of six as a page boy and my first dialogue on the stage was, yes, my lord, that's all I had to say. This is all From then on, we had Shakespeare as our selections from the high school and also in the college. And in the college dramatics, I played in As You Like It with the role of the Duke. Well, they're all amateur works, but somehow the acting bug didn't catch me. What attracted me in those days was to see films, which was a new thing then. And I started seeing silent serials running away from home, surreptitiously taking some money from some friends. And we used to go and see films. They were all episodes. One of the earliest actors that I saw was Eddie Polo. He was a serial star. Then we had Charles Hutchinson, Francis Ford, Pearl White and all these people of the silent days. So I used to see the serials. It used to continue every week, four episodes a week. Then later on, I saw a film that made an impression on me was Douglas Fairbanks, Thief of Baghdad. Because it was an athletic part, I retain every, in my memory, everything that I have seen about that film. So when I came to Bombay, films was not on my mind. I tried to get various jobs and even wanted to leave the country and go out, work as a sailor. But one day, accidentally, I met a college friend of mine called Rangaya. And he was working as a manager of a distribution company called Mahavir Photo Place. And the pictures which were produced in Nasik, they used to distribute. So he told me, I'm a manager and I've got plenty of space. Why don't you come and stay with me? So I stayed with him. And then he told me, what are you doing? I said, look, this has happened and now I'm in Bombay. I'm trying to get a job and carry on. He says, look, will you like to work in films? I said, why not? If it is work, I'll do it. So he took me one morning to meet late Mama Varerkar. He looked at me up and down and said, well, you look intelligent, you look uh, educated, and we want educated people in these films. So you work for us. I said, I will work for us, for you. That is how I started my film career. He was with uh, another gentleman called uh, Shiraz Ali Hakim. They had started a film. So I was given a part, and my first makeup on my face was done by Sri Mama Varerkar. So we started working on the film. Then suddenly, I don't know what happened. They said, now monsoons are coming. That was in the month of May that we were shooting these films. So we'll go down to Vadwan, a place in Saurashtra, where hardly there is five or eight inches of rainfall every monsoon season. So we'll have sunlight because we used to work on sunlight in those days. So we all, the whole cast was bundled up. We landed up at Vodwan and our shooting started. And in that, that is my first picture called Sparkling Youth in English. And the Hindi title was Jagmagati Jawani. And another thing was that the lead was played by an artist called Madhav Kale, very handsome looking man. And I played the second lead. But in those days, we used to have this usual action films. So the hero used to put on a mask like Robin Hood and do good and rob the rich and pay the poor. 
So all the physical stunts were done by me. I used to do the riding and fighting, putting on a mask and uh, the costume of the hero. And that was my, now it is very common, but it was not very common then, which is called doubles. Now I think for every star that you are watching now, we have doubles. They just come and the close-ups, they are photographed. The rest of the fight is being done by the doubles. So we had to do our own riding and fighting and all stunts in those days. So that picture finished and again we had to come back to Bombay. And as usual, you know, the silent films would never take more than three weeks, four weeks, film would be finished. Because of one thing, in silent days, the film used to run at 16 frames per second, not at 24 frames per second as it is being done now. And here I'll tell you my first reaction for the shooting of that film. Our camera was a wooden camera called Williamson. Our magazines of 400 feet also were wooden and it was hand cranked. The equipment consisted of only a few reflectors and a camera. That's all. And the cameraman cranking. And I was so fascinated with the camera that I became a third assistant also. My only job was because of my physique was to lift the camera and run after the cameraman and keep it wherever it was placed. Look at the spirit level and say, I'm ready. So that was how we started. And the film that was used in those days was called orthochromatic. It had no color rendition. It was a black and white also, but you could not use a filter. So there used to be glare. That's why all our clothes used to be colored either yellow or white, so that the glare should not come in the camera. So dark clothes were always preferred to the white ones. So I finished that picture and came back to Bombay again, looking out for a job. Luckily, I stayed with the director, Mr. Nagendra Muzumdar, as a paying guest. So then I met another very interesting personality called Indulal Yagnik, who later became the president of the Gujarat Kisan Sabha, who had just left Gandhiji from Savarmati and wanted to serve the country through the film medium. So he looked at me and said, well, he's a nice boy and we this want educated people coming into the film, so let us do some constructive work. So my first lead was called The Triumph of Love, or in the Hindi version it was known as Rasili Rani, opposite Madhuri, an up-and-coming star, a very good-looking young girl she was. And the same film was again directed by Nagendra Muzumdar. And we went again outdoors, to Baroda, where we had the permission from the Maharaja to shoot in Lakshmi Vilas Palace. And we finished that picture there. And it was a my first picture in which I played a double role. The adaptation was from Anthony Hope's novel called Prisoner of Zenda. And I played the role of Rudolf Rassendil in that. So the picture was finished and I was so excited to see it being released and how the audience would react to it. And every day evening I used to walk across Imperial Cinema where I would see my own posters put up there. And the picture ran for about three weeks. And in those days, if a picture ran for four weeks, it was considered a jubilee in those days. So my picture ran for about three weeks. And I was so happy, so excited to see myself on the screen. And then people liking me for what I've done. In those days, the leading actors were very famous actors were Master Vittal, D. Billy Moria, Sulochana, Gohar, Raja Sando, Khalil. They were all old colleagues. Master Bacha, Master Navin Chandra, they were all there. So then that is how my career started. And I continued in that company called Young India Pictures and worked for three more other pictures, which are, as I told you, my first picture was Sparkling Youth. My second picture was in which I played the hero is called Triumph of Love. And then another picture called Fight Unto Death. Now you'll be intrigued and surprised why we are, I'm using all English titles. Because our alma mater, we used to copy American pictures. Let me be very frank about it. And we learned all our craft from American films. So then afterwards, there was another film called Krishna Kumari. Then in this Three, two pictures, previous pictures, I played a role. But again, in a film called My Hero, I played the lead opposite Madhuri again. And it was another big success of those days. After that, I was contracted to work in Sharda films. 
because Mr. Vittal had joined Imperial Films and they used to have two heroes in a company or three heroes and they selected me as the hero for that uh, replacement of Mr. Vittal. And my, another star in those days was Nandram Pahlwan. Here you'll be surprised why my name is P. Jairaj. I must make it very clear. The P stands for a clan name called P-A-I-D-I-P-A-T-I, Paidi Party Jairaj. But in those days, they used to write my name as P. Jairaj, and many of them thought, oh, P means he must be a Pahlwan. Or later on in the talkies, the word P was associated with me as Pandit Jairaj. So I'm none of those, but still the P stands for a family name, which I rarely use. And Jairaj is the name now, I think I go by the screen name. And after that, I got a year's contract with Sharda Film Company as a hero. And my salary was 75 rupees a month. Then the first picture started. I went to my boss, Mr. Bhogilal Dewey, who had recently returned from Germany. And he had brought some very nice equipment. Now I must say that old Williamson camera had been replaced by Bell and & Howell and a German camera called Ascania and a French camera called Debris. These small hand crank cameras were there in vogue in those days. So I started work there. My first picture was called Mahasagar no Moti or The Pearl. After a couple of days work, I went to the boss and said, boss, what is this? Now we are in the 30s and you're making a magic picture. He said, you shut up and mind your business and do whatever the director says. I said, all right, sir. So we finished the picture. And that picture turned out to be the, one of the biggest hits of Shardal. So he called me again, and I thought probably I'm going to get a notice after this picture. When he called me back and I said, yes, he called his Metaji, he said, He said, I said, I said, I said, I said, I said, So after the first picture, I got 25 rupees as a raise. And then I started working in a series of films there. There was one director who had directed me in this film called Mr. Shah. He used to come in his top boots, breeches, a coat and a hat. And he was a Gujarati gentleman. I asked him, Shah Kaka, you so a dress pair in our show. He said, I'm a Cecil B. Dillon, I'm assistant. He had worked with Cecil B. Dimmel in Hollywood, his earlier pictures, you see, Birth of a Nation and things like that. So he was so fond of his boots and his breeches and every day is to come in the same costume for shooting. Well, that was the first picture with which I worked and later on I worked with one other two directors called Mr. Kapoor and Mohan Lal Shah did another picture. So in those days, in the silent days, there were a few companies like uh, Sharda, Imperial, Krishna, Ranjit. They were the established companies in those days, Meta Lohar Productions. So the standard of films from the day I entered and now had, uh, I mean, recording. it had gone better because I first time I worked in a studio where it was very complete from shooting to editing to laboratory work to posters, everything. So I was so curious to learn all these that I told my director, Mr. Nagendra Muzundar, he says, Governor, give me, uh, get me permission so that I could work in all the studios and learn the craft. So I got a green signal. So I became an assistant editor and an assistant director and assistant poster painter and I used to work in lab and also on the camera. So I could get a grasp of what a film was even in those silent days. And my literature consisted of buying magazines on the roadside footpaths like photoplay and movies, things like that for forerunners and read them avidly and come to know all the improvements that were being done in America. So that was my other education. In those days, I had a very good friend called Dikshit, who later became a very famous comedian. And we both used to get together and correspond to New York Institute of Photography for screenplay writing and all that sort of thing. But one more thing was in Sharda when I first entered, if ever I spoke in English, I was their enemy. Because they said, oh, this pada likha hai, ye kya karega idhar? So we, I stopped speaking in English and only has to speak in Hindi in those days. And another work that I used to do in those days for all, most of the directors was to write the subtitles for the silent films. 
as you know in a silent films the artist gives an expression starts to talk and it is cut and the title is inserted and later back what he talked is continued back again that is how we used to tell our stories in those days but telling the story was not so important in those days because action everything was action oriented and that was a safe and sure bet for a producer to make his money get his money back but later on after i did this picture pearl i worked in a gypsy picture called aurat my leading lady was zebunisa she was quite famous and i think i worked with her in about five pictures as a leading man then the picture after pearl was aurat which was directed by mr kapoor then i did an a picture called dushman also directed by mr shah then i did a film called dance of life or zindagi by mr kapoor again and queen of fairies all these were most of them were arab fantasies we had gypsy costumes and our locations used to consist of hardly going out to chembur chembur was supposed to be like a kashmir for us in those days and the usual uh, paraphernalia that we carry now as you are aware of a film shooting consisted only of a lorry in which we were all bundled in nobody had a car everybody used to get into a lorry and the equipment consisted of a bucket and a glass for drinking water with a rope of the bucket and a small box which contained our makeup and tincture iodine and cotton because falling down from the horse or doing all our stunts we used to get injured so naturally this is the equipment we carried and the assistant director carried a small slate with a chalk that is how numbering was to done and the director and the assistant if at all the assistant had the privilege would carry a notebook in which the shots and the numbers were written and the story was in the director's brain mostly there were no screen writers in those days they used to adapt it from english novels or some american films that is how in the early days we used to work then later on when my contract was ending there with sharda the years contract we made an all star cast film called all for love in which there were three heroes and three heroines opposite me my heroine was mehta and opposite nandram was a heroine called moti bai and opposite madhav kale was a heroine called noor jahan so this all star cast is not a new invention even in the silent days we had this type of films so that was my last silent film and the end of the silent era yeah so i was just going to ask you about the theaters you know when silent films were shown i believe there were some people who used to act out the to yes, say the dialogue yes, give yes, the music yes, can yes, you tell us something yes, about yes. that you see i was very lucky to have a good choice of uh, colleagues in those days one was mr prithviraj kapoor mubarak merchant mr naim palli yakub jagdish sethi and we we used to go down to see a film every day because the shooting in the silent days were mostly done in sunlight and uh, the studios had muslin screens through which the sunlight used to filter down and then they used to give reflectors and that is how they used to light out the stage but after 6 there was no shooting by 5 o'clock we used to pack up and our luxurious travel in those days was a tram car and one and i used to take you from dadar to kala ghoda in those days so we used to get together at say imperial some place walk down to one of the oldest theaters where is alexandra it is still having the same name then this globe theater which has become i think alankar at the moment and rialto is there which has become apsara and empress is there where now this what is that cinema owned by this minerva so these were the theaters and imperial cinema is probably one of the oldest and still exists mm-hmm. where there are two elephants on the other side if you watched it somewhere so we used to get together but never go to an indian film we used to always go to an english film and capital is to run all the metropolitan masterpieces capital empire and excelsior with three theaters we're running english pictures so we used to go there every day and every practically four days in a week we used to keep on seeing our pictures because that was our school or our education of course we never used to copy the artists as such but we used to be inspired by them and uh, sort of do our work the you're talking about the theaters wiring of yes. the yes not the wiring of the theaters but uh, i believe that they had special ah, people who yes yes i i get it what used to happen was the audience the ticket used to start from 2 ns 
four annas, nine annas, and one, two, if anybody could afford in the balcony. We used to, in those days, see English pictures in four annas, all of us, and rarely go to an Indian picture. But if you're caught in an Indian picture, and when the picture is running, they used to say, Sab, ye kya likha hua idar, kya idar? We used to explain by the time the shot is to be finished. So we used to keep calm and dumb and say, we don't know the language ourselves, and so that I could, we could enjoy the picture. Then what used to happen in front of the screen, or sometimes, sub, not suburbs, I say in small stations, it used to be behind the screen also. There used to be, a, like the Greek theater, there used to be a man with a harmonium and a tabla and a man who went on relating what is the story about. He said, somebody came and said, Ab aya dekho vithal, or dham doraka hone wala hai, ye hone wala. And then at the same time, when the riding shorts is to come, they have to have empty coconut shells and keep on making horses were going on and the music is to be played and tabla is to be played. And when the fighting was there, we used to have a lot of... So this was how we our films were being shown then. I think it was very common. It was not so common in Bombay as it was in other small towns. And one of the directors later on in my career who was doing this, I worked with him, became a very famous man called V.M. Vyas. Acha, V.M. Vyas used to do this work before. He used to do this work in Gujarati. Sir, can you tell us something about your contemporaries in the silent era and your own position as a leading man? My contemporaries were senior to me, most of them, and uh, they were stars in their own right because I joined the film later. One of the most famous people in those days was Master Vithal, D. Bilimoria, Jal Merchant, Khalil, Raja Sando, there's so many others, and Navin Chandra was another educated man. He was supposed to go to Olympics as a gymnast and he became a leading man. He was from Baroda and I am really grateful to him because all the stunts that he used to do, which we saw in American films, he used to repeat it. But in a scientific manner, he told me that we used to have a springboard and how to take a dive, do all this. In the process, I have broken my two ankles, one wrist and a fractured knee, doing my own doubling shots for the action films. Well, we used to see films ourselves, you know, Indian films ourselves, but rarely. For instance, I used to go and see, Yaakov said, yaar, meri picture chal rahe, ja ke dekh jai. So I used to go and see when Mr. Prithiraj's films or Jagdish films. We used to see Indian films. But we were also starstruck when uh, Gohar or uh, Sulochana's Ruby Mayer's films were there. We used to go and see them also. But later on, as I told you, they were so much associated with the American films, being our alma mater. Even the producers used to say, for instance, there was a film called Mark of Zorro. Mark of Zorro was released in Empire Cinema. And three weeks later, the same film was made into an Indian film called Kala Pahar. And Vittal was the star of that film. And when people saw Mark of Zorro later on, they said, Arey, yaar, isne to Kala Pahar ki copy ki hai. That is how it used to be in Indian films in those days. Well, my position, they used to call me and Zebun Nisa as the Garbo and Gilbert of the Indian films in those days. Because we did a few torrid uh, scenes, and I must confess here that I did my first kissing scene on the screen with Zebun Nisa. In a film, as I told you before, which is called uh, Bahadur Beti or Aurat, it was known as. Well, this is about my friends who are stars, about my colleagues. I have memories of two or three friends, very dear friends of mine. One with Madhav Kale. He was so handsome, believe me. Of course, as you know, in a silent film, you have two dimensions, breadth and length. In talkies, we have the third dimension, which is the sound. He was really so handsome that uh, I used to look absolutely plain standing beside me. But I used to tell him, Kale, look here. You as a star are on your looks, but I as a star will become as an actor. That is how we used to challenge each other. And another dear friend whom I remember was Dikshit. He was very well educated and we spent a lot of time and we used to have really good discussions on all the American films. By that time, Americans were making some beautiful films, masterpieces, especially from Paramount, from Metro, and Fox, these were the companies 
they were making some excellent films and we had the opportunity to see some russian films also i saw films by podovkin then and i saw some german films and i saw some french films these films used to come mostly in excel share and empire the seat which used to occupy was only four annas so it was very convenient to our salaries i should say and of course we are associated but that is the school in which we learned because today the modern actor indian actor is really blessed i should say because he has got an institute he has got books people who have experienced what film making is had written books which we didn't have because we learned only by trial and error today we have uh, courses refresher courses we have two years course the government of india has opened out the film institute so today's actor is really blessed not in our time because we i should say were the foundation stones laid down on which the beautiful edifice is being built these days well that is how i was looked upon and i was quite a popular star and people still if people of my age are alive remember my silent films also and i have uh, not just uh, by talking but uh, you know mr narvekar i had the occasion to show you all my old stills also of my old films because which i have very carefully preserved which are almost 60 years old now come after this 14th of april almost my 60th year in films so another thing that happened is that we also in the course all this especially in this last one year there was a great improvement in indian films also and they were going in for very good subjects social subjects also and some artistic uh, films were also being made and some of very eminent marathi films were also being made in those days we had uh, some films coming from kolhapur and pune also very thought provoking films a historical backgrounds and things like that but i should here mention one director called nandlal jaswantlal probably he was one of the most artistic directors who came out from the indian films he was a commerce graduate but he was a very artistic man later on he joined ranjit and made some films one of his last films was anarkali which he made for filmistan later on so our films were really getting better much better than the crude sort of films we used to make they were all so complete and so entertaining then came the bombshell and that was the talkies and there was such a chaos nobody knew what was happening but some wise acres as usually said oh after some time this new fat talkies will go away silent will remain but well they were proved wrong in the long run well talkies came in and the as we have uh, dada phalke the father of the indian film industry here i should mention another name eminent name ardeshar irani who made the first toki called alamara with the coming of the tokis there was uh, so much of confusion and so much of fear in the minds of the people that uh, they did not know what to do because it became departmental now only there was camera which was hand cranked now the camera was being run by motor then there is a sound then there is laboratory then we had a special printer then we had moviola for editing so the equipment started growing and naturally film making became a little more complicated here what happened now i must tell you the scene in which i was placed in those days it was the end of 31 when my contract with sharda finished and the talkies came in and i got my notice so i had to leave the studio then i did not know what to do but one advantage i had as i told you before i come from hyderabad so language was no barrier for me because i used to read and write urdu only but the language spoken by the stage artists coming in the early films was different from the normal language that we speak today in these days so what happened all the stage artists were requisitioned and they all came together so every company went in for stage artists ashraf khan was there so many other names that i don't remember now from the parsi stage so at that time there was another stage company called the madan theaters in calcutta and they made their first picture called shirin farhad which had about 40 songs and starring kajan and nisar so then 
what happened was which is still true today and i think will be tr- true for a long long time to come music became an integral part of our film making so songs were needed and of course i was no singer although i attempted singing which i'll tell you later on but uh, the hero had to sing so it was so difficult for me then as usual what happens is we call it layoff or uh, in the parlance of the actors in the west they say what are you doing these days he said i'm just resting the word resting means i'm out of job so i was resting then then i came across a very interesting person called professor dev dev very eminent musician god bless him i is still alive i think he shifted to pune i have not had i haven't seen him for quite some time so i met him and uh, he said we became very friendly he said what are you doing i said the talkies have come and i have nothing i'm silent star he said wait i let you know so i was staying with a friend of mine and he told me that a company from england has come in which is called london films limited so they are making a film in which an artist has to speak english and urdu so my chest increased by 4 inches i said well i can do both the languages then he introduced me to the people this is all your radio uh, then recording they said we'll have an audition i said fair enough but uh, mr dev that had tipped me off <coughs> what type of roles i might be they might cast me in so prepare a convenient passage for that audition the role that i was i played later on but which they were searching for was a role of a buddhist monk so i went and bought sir edwin arnold's light of asia and mugged up a passage and rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed with proper intonation because we had done so much shakespeare in school and college that of course it was not very difficult for me then i mugged up a few couplets because they were not interested in dialogues the dialogue director who was in the audition said we must have couplets so i had prepared even that so the great day dawned and this audition took place at the willingdon club the english unit had brought their own recording system and it was for the first time in our country it was called fidelitone recording system first time it came to our country they had their there and all the technicians were english and it was so comfortable for me and some of the artists we were there to converse with them and the other artists stars who were there they felt lost because they could only know one language that was hindi and they didn't know hindi so we had that advantage then later on the audition came over and we were given 5 minutes for our audition each of the artists and in that morning i saw quite a lot of familiar faces which gradually faded out because their voices were not suitable for the microphone the diction was faulty then the language they could not properly enunciate so i was eventually selected to play that role of the monk and was signed on a contract and the whole picture was to be made in two months out in hyderabad dekhan so we all shifted down to hyderabad for this film that built a village and uh, they had uh, cordoned off a jagir manadalas jagir where there are some wild animals also and that was my first exposure to organized film making which as you know as i told you before that i was so fond of wanted to learn the craft that i was just hungry you know everything they did i used to make notes and take it down and which came useful later to me when i became a director so we went down to hyderabad and uh, i would say for the first time the film was made without makeup the other characters jagdish shetty played a thug so he grew his own beard everybody grew he grew his mustaches i grew my hair and uh, there was no makeup they insisted there should be no makeup but here again i must say something which i refer to in the early stages of the silent days is that the film by now has changed into panchromatic film in which you could put color filters and you have a uh, different grade in photography so this orthochromatic film had finished and panchromatic had come and which was a faster film so even without makeup we looked nice and they wanted us as indians not that we should make up and look foreigners and work in indian characters so shikari was an experience for me and then the greatest thrill i got was to see my own voice on the screen when they showed us the rushes 
we continued shooting and i was also very happy that i could go back to my hometown and stress about it and show off that i am a big star now and because here i must tell you one thing mr narvikar that when i came to films every film actor and actress was treated as a pariah we had no social status there was a stigma attached to a film actor or a film actress in those days because fair enough the product that came was from a questionable strata of society but gradually as i told you educated people came in better people came in better films were being made so gradually this change went away and the artists were getting status and today you know our artists have become not only politicians an actor is the president of america another actor the late mr mg ramchandran was chief minister of madras state so you see how we have grown up in stature from the silent days to the talky days here i must say that after learning from this english unit our technician also learned so many things from this english unit the picture is finished and taken to wembley studios to be edited when the picture came back the english version was whatever they had they kept i don't know what happened to that but the indian version there were no buyers because there were no songs so then they injected songs into that picture and released it as uh, gulshane havas gulshane havas yes and you know where was it released opposite metro there was a theater now which is a library metro was not built in those days so the picture was released there we had the premiere show there in this film i had the good fortune to work with sita devi international star who had worked with himansh roy with a german unit in uh, Light of Asia and Loves of a Mughal Prince. These two pictures, which gave her an international status. I was very happy working there. So that assignment finished, and again I was back to my old uh, job, which was no job at all, and looking out for a job. Then Professor Devdar said, "Look, again I am getting into now the Indian films. We are making a film, Mrs. Kote, and Krishna Rao Gore." and she had come fresh from her success film called ayodhya ka raja from uh, toki with uh, the celebrated singer govindra tembe and she had come there and she was to play ahilya i was to play the role of indra and gore was to play the role of gautami this was a story called patit pavan or ahilya uddhar they were of course professional singers mrs durga bai khote also was a very good singer and i was a non singer there but uh, devdar said let you have to sing a song i said professor you know i'm almost stone deaf i said how can you? i said i'll make you a singer so i used to practice 2 hours in the morning 2 hours in the evening going over my notes then he set a tune for me and i practiced for one month and they said now you're okay we can record it so at last this is my first and last experience as a singer in the talkies at last the day arrived by the time near vihar lake that built a ashram and here indra comes to seduce ahilya so my song was all ready and in those days the music was always recorded direct we used to have musicians in a trolley with uh, hardly about seven or eight musicians and singer had only one mic and the same mic picked up the music also we didn't have mics as we have now in those days so everything was all set and the shot was ready and uh, the cameraman used to take a trolley shot with three different stops three different lenses so in the stop they used to put two flowers or two pigeons and things like that you know old time to just cover up that spot because the song was direct the picture was direct so at last the day arrived and i was all keyed up made up ready for the song and the song started they were playing the music and i was supposed to sing and suddenly in the sound i was told but my voice was going to church gate and the music was going to borobli there was no synchronization so professor devdar was there he said what is the matter i said professor used to take rehearsals i was all right i he said i know what is the matter with it then what he did was he told the cameraman i want you to take his song in a close up and just behind me the tabla and the harmony were put and the other musicians were playing it separately and would you believe that 3 minute song i think hardly i must have breathed a couple of times but in one breath i sang my song the my first and last song 
later on the song turned out to be good but not musical enough to match krishna rao gore and uh, durga khote so they said in the final version we'll skip it i said thank god by that time what had happened was i had worked in one or two other action films where the hero had to sing the hero had to sing and we had some celebrated singers in a film called zare ishq which i worked mm. after patit pavan a very celebrated singer called sora was there she sang and the hero had to hear and you know just play with the flower and things like that so somehow i managed to have my status as a star continuing and after that came a revolution in song and music and it was from calcutta devki babu made a film called puran bhagat in which he used music for the first time to give an emotional appeal and songs at the correct situations not for song song sake but songs to help your story to build up your story the moment of a story so that was the first revolution and the singer was blind singer was kc day and fair enough in another picture in which i worked there was a blind singer he was not blind but they made him a blind singer and we had their song and that film was aurat ka dil and after that experience i signed a contract with mr mohan bhavnani in ajanta film studios for a year and by that time many productions had started in sound the sound machines had come the sound machines in those days were audio chemex which was uh, sound was in density then came fidelity tone then there was another thing called adair jenkins so these were the sound machines which different studios were using and our technicians you see though they didn't have the academic degrees by practice i think some of our technicians became one of the finest technicians both in sound and in camera work our laboratory work also improved so gradually there was an improvement all over standards in the meantime in our country the theaters were wired for sound and the silent films had died a glorious death by that time and talkies had come to stay before you go to mr bhavnani i would like to ask you one more technical question yes you said that uh, sound was recorded directly on film as the picture was yeah now what were the problems in editing at that time since everything was uh, recorded directly simultaneously no, no there were two methods you see sound with the film and sound separately by that time i am talking <laughs> sound was recorded separately because it's a technical thing that when you see something say a man is firing a gun you see the flash first and hear the sound later so sound has to travel at a certain speed that is about 726 feet per second and the light travels at 186000 miles per second so that is why we have a synchronous film 19 frames ahead and then that is how but sound was recorded separately but the earlier ones had a tube in the camera so sound and pictures to be recorded and editing was difficult of course but not very difficult because sound and picture was there you could cut picture and sound together and join it away later on of course it it was very convenient and at that time by the time i arrived in i had signed a contract with uh, mr bhavnani another great revolution happened and that was the playback system and when the playback system came over and we were all very happy especially the old school we were very very happy that now of course the hero can sing now with a ghost voice and that is how it started and uh, this was in the year 1935 and that year i was making a film called mil mazdoor after working in a series of films for mr bhavnani the films that i worked in bhavnani was because he had engaged mr nisar that famous singer from calcutta in playing most of the leads after i joined uh, bhavnani i did a film called maya jal then i did a film called vasav dat the royal musician then i did a film called saira paristan with mr bhavnani it was again another fantasy very well received in the box office then i did a film called darya dil with mr bhavnani then the last and the best picture i did with him was mil mazdoor here i must say mil mazdoor as i told you once before that we had a multi star system also in the silent days here for the first time in the commercial world leaving shikari of course that we again we i worked without makeup it was the story of a mill worker and the story was written by the celebrated author 
Premchand, Munshi Premchand. He did two films for the Indian film industry. One was Seva Sadhan, the other was Mel Mazdoor. And I had the good fortune sitting with him and talking and discussing with him. And it was made into a really social film. And uh, the then government, British government, said this film is in a socialistic pattern. They banned it. Later on, it was in the censors for some time, and Mr. Baunani was having a fight with them. Somehow they compromised. And then it was released as Gharib Parwar. Of course, it did not do well at the box office, but I think it was a milestone in filmmaking in those days. After this experience, my dreams came true and I could work with Devki Bose. Devki Bose in a film called Jeevan Natak. It was in the year 1935. He, of course, as usual, took an audition. In the cast were myself, Durgabai Khote, Mubarak Merchant, and Maruti Rao, who was a very fine singer of those days. So it was a story of two generations, not two generations, two centuries. The same characters playing two centuries before, and now same characters playing modern roles. A very advanced sort of a film of, for those days, of course. We did some glorious outdoor shooting in Kolhapur with elephants and horses and all that sort of thing. And there I had the experience of learning so many things under Mr. Devki Babu. First and foremost, I learned so much about sound from him. Because as you're aware, the average Bengali artist is much superior to some other artists, as many artists, because of the sound. The Bengali language is so rounded and they speak so well. And he used to recite poetry and then tell us that don't depend on the sound engineer for your levels. You are an actor first. Remember what the other actors stopped where he's speaking. You have to pick up the same note. And he used to rehearse us for a month with music on for all our rehearsals. And then he used to shoot. And he shot that picture in about six weeks and edited. In that, I had the good fortune to sit with him and discuss with him and learn screenplay writing and also editing, which I, of course, was very keen about. And I learned this thing from Mr. Devki Babu. And that picture finished and was released. And uh, as usual, you know, the Bombay, Calcutta, Pune, Kolhapur centers, where they had all their prejudices. And he said, Devki Babu, after his great success from Puran Bhagat, Sita and After Earthquake, came to make that film. It was not very well received by the public. But I think it was another milestone in picture production.